supplies inventory at the beginning of the year is $1,200. Purchases of supplies during the year total $3,600, and the inventory at the end of the year is $1,400. Notice that paragraph is before letters A and B. Letters A and B are independent of one another. They're mutually exclusive. One or the other happened, but not both. Let's read A. Record the following directly in T accounts for supplies and supplies expense. Employing the system of initially recording supplies how? Everybody said? Come on, speak up. That's an asset. Identify each entry by number. One, the beginning balance. Two, the purchases for the period. Three, the adjusting entry at the end of the period. Four, the closing entry. Five, the reversing entry if necessary. Let's go back to the opening paragraph. First phrase. The supplies inventory at the beginning of the year is, everybody said? $1,200. So here's your choice. Should that $1,200 be in supplies or supplies expense? I, I'd recommend that every one of you get that answer on the tip of your tongue right this minute. I want to know. There's a good chance I'm going to call on you. Woo, wouldn't this be a good time to have clickers? And I don't. That beginning balance, $1,200, should be in supplies or supplies expense, Chris? Uh, supplies. Supplies. Danny? Sorry. Supplies or supplies expense? Supplies. Supplies or supplies expense, Judith? Supplies. Brooke? Supplies. Stephanie? Supplies. So, do I need to ask anybody else or we already got a trend here? Y'all want to know what happened last hour? It was 50-50. I had seven votes for one account and seven votes for the other. You should have been here. <laughs> supplies or supplies expense, Talon? Supplies. Because? Because it's an asset. Yeah, that's almost the right answer. Which method are we following? The asset method. Yes. Ah, now those go together. Because we're following the asset method, and that's the asset account, not just because it's an asset. Okay? We're following the asset method. We've chosen to follow this method. The beginning balance should be in the asset account. You are with me, aren't you? Yes. Two, the purchases for the period. How much did we buy, class? Everybody said? 3600 $3, Do you think we went to Office Depot once? and bought $3,600 worth of supplies? Yes or no? No. I'd like to think we went several times. Let's make up a number. In Monday's lecture, in the interest of time, I made up 19. We went 19 times. Let's do some other number that'll just be our own special number for this section. How many times did we go to Office Depot? Say a number. 33. I heard 33 and I heard 23. Suggest another one somebody. 10. 91 is too many. 10 is too round. 12 is round. 11. 11. Okay, I'll go 11. Let's do 11. Is that all right with everybody? Sure. So, how many times did we go to Office Depot, Talon? 11 times. 11 times. And 11 times we came back and credited cash. Are you with me right this minute? Say yes or no. Yes. I'm looking for something to debit. And oh, look, there are two accounts. They both have debit balances. Either one of these will work. One thing. Either one of these will work. Which is it? Right. Supplies or supplies expense? Supplies. Which is it, Chris? Supplies. Which is it, Joe? Supplies. Which is it, Anna? Supplies. Which is it, Alina? Because Elena, which method are we follow? We're following the asset method. And we're going to debit the asset account for $3,600 total all year long, all 11 times we went to Office Depot. Now, Elena, what is the key word in administering methods? Do you know? No. Good. 
Pick a letter. Didn't hear you. E. I. Who knows the word? You are not alone. Pick me a letter. O. Oh, not really big word. S. Who knows the word? Don't say it. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. Consistency. Ooh. And what was the question? To which consistency is the answer? Something about managing accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me out with the question, somebody? Did you say what is the similarity between the two methods? No. Oh. What is the key in administering methods? This is that 23 times thing. No, 11 times, excuse me. 11 times we went to Office Depot. Did we, how many times did we have to decide to debit supplies, Elena? 11. No. One. Yeah. Oh, did y'all hear that? How many times did we decide to debit supplies, Elena? One. Just once. When we picked the asset method, we decided to consistently follow that method. This isn't a tough decision every time we go to Office Depot. We just decided once that we would follow the asset method all year long. So here we are at the end of the year. What's the balance of that account? Everybody that knows said 4,800. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes. I believe that account balance could be described with an adjective that would fit in these blanks. Who wants to play this time? Brian? Yeah. Fits, doesn't it? Good try, Brian. It's not the word I'm thinking of. Most people would pick a letter. Brian? A. A. Today, Brian. C. <laughs> Didn't hear you. C. B. T. S. Who knows the word? Let me see those hands. Talon, <laughs> listen to me. I'm pretty sure. Oh, 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 don't talk. Listen. <laughs> you may pick a letter. Oh. M. I wanted to give you some other instructions. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Money. No. Oh. Come on. I Wait, wanted you to pick a letter to give it away. Oh. No, you, you, you can't play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mika. You get the letter? No. Oh, yes. Give it away. Come on, give it away. X. Yeah. Brian. Oh, Brian. Next. Next. <laughs> Ever heard the word in accounting before? Yes. How about somebody telling me why mixed is such a good adjective to describe the balance of this account right this minute? Alina. It's a partial asset, partial expense. Thank you. Well said. We've got two things all stirred together in this account. We've got asset portion and expense <coughs> portion, or we could have said... That it's incredible? No. Used and unused? We've got used and unused all stirred together in that account. Consider doing nothing. This account would be overstated. This account would be understated. Net income would be overstated. Capital would be overstated. Both financial statements would be messed up. Boss, is this a good time to ask for a raise? <clears throat> I don't think so. Y'all with me or not? Don't you think we ought to do something? Every person in this room should be able to make this adjusting entry by now. 
We have done this for two weeks. Every person in this room should be able to make this adjusting entry. Instruction three, the adjusting entry. The opening paragraph says the supplies inventory at the beginning of the year is 1,200. The purchases of supplies during the year total 3,600. And the inventory at the end of the year is 1,400. I need a volunteer and I need them fast. Chris, make me an adjusting entry. Thirty-four hundred. I don't see thirty-four hundred on this piece of paper at all, Chris. How did you get thirty-four hundred? Uh, added up the supplies. These add to forty-eight hundred. I think the class told me that. And then I subtracted <coughs> the end of the year balance from the. Why didn't you just make the entry for fourteen hundred? That's the amount you were given. Yeah. But that's the, what you're left over with. That's what's unused. Ah. So when we talk about this account being mixed and about the two components being used and unused, which of these components do we want to leave in the asset account? Used or unused? Uh, unused. And which amount do we want to transfer over to the expense account? Uh, used. Used. So you made what entry? Um, supplies. Debit supplies expense, credit supplies $3,400. Way to go, Chris. You want to tell the class one more time how you got the $3,400? Um, I added up the debit and supplies, and since we were left over with 1400 I subtracted that from supplies, and then that was what I used. 4800 minus 1400 determined the portion used that got transferred over to supplies expense. <coughs> Right, Chris? Yeah. Who's with Chris and me right this minute? Let me see hands, please. Good. If you've got a question, now would be a good time to ask. Four. The closing entry. One of these two accounts needs to be closed. Which one is it, Brooke? One of those two accounts. Supplies or supplies expense needs to be closed? Supplies needs to be closed. What kind of an account is supplies? Asset, liability, capital, and <coughs> expense. In which step is it closed? First, second, third, or fourth? It's not closed. Oh, you'd like to. expense, I would like to read the answer. You'd like to. Uh -huh. It's okay to make a mistake in here, isn't it? Yes. Which of these two accounts need to be closed? Five expense. In which step? Number two. Good. Are you willing to make me a closing entry? Um, Give it a try. In the second step of closing entries, you will close expenses. Give me some numbers. Give me some account types. Tell me what to debit, what to credit. Oh dear. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I wait. So supplies is essentially closed. Is that correct? Mm, no. Supplies has a balance in it. What's oh, supplies oh, balance right this minute, Chris? Fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred. Okay, so I need to get supplies expense for the thirty-four hundred to completely go away to get it to zero. There you go. And 3400 is debited, which means I need to have the same amount on the credit side. There you go. Sorry. I have to it's okay. Start. You're doing fine. Um, so I believe we're halfway there. Go ahead and say that one one more time to reinforce what you just said. Um, I need to credit 3400 so that I can close the account to zero. Credit, supplies, expense, 3400 you just said. Yeah. And the second step of closing entries when all the expenses are closed, credited, what do you debit? Brooke wants to use the lifeline. Hands up, help her out. Somebody. Michael. Income summary. Is correct. Okay. Debit income summary. Credit supplies expense, 3400 Okay. Yes, Brooke? Sure. And you posted to supplies expense mentally? Mm, yeah, you talked about sure. it. Sure. You talked through it. What's the balance of supplies expense right this minute? Shouldn't it be zero? That, that, I don't like the way you said that. It should be zero. It shouldn't be zero. It, it should, is zero. should be in that. It's zero. It is. It's a statement of fact. It <laughs> is. Not it should be. It is. It is. Yes? Yes. Hey, class. <clears throat> there are five steps here. The fifth one is 
the reversing entry if necessary. And so the question is, necessary? Now let me help you with this. This is the newest part of the week, and maybe the toughest part of the week. So one of the things that we could do to get you to see how to make reversing entries is tell you a bunch of rules that you could follow because you didn't know any better than to follow the rules that you were told to follow. Like, I'll tell you what, it's Tuesday, I'll say the rules. I said them yesterday, I'll say them again. But by Thursday, wouldn't it be nice if you could say the rules? Yes? So the first rule we learned in Monday's lecture was all accruals need to be reversed. Is this an accrual or a deferral? You need to decide. Y'all need a little help with that? A little reminder? So, in Monday's lecture, I reminded you that it is when cash changes hands that differentiates accruals from deferrals. How accruals lead up to the exchange of cash and deferrals follow the exchange of cash. And if this dollar sign stands for cash that starts with a C, this is in alphabetical order. No, I don't say stuff like that. Did anybody hear it? <laughs> you look dumbfounded. Your faces look like you didn't hear it. I was just trying to give you a little tip, something that you could remember. So, class, did we use up the supplies and then pay for them? No. Or buy the supplies and then set out using them up? Is this an accrual or a deferral? Hold your hand up if you think it's an accrual. A deferral. Good. So the first rule, all accruals need to be reversed, won't help us a bit in this case. The second rule, if an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, well, that's a good rule. That one always works. But to apply that rule, we've got to know about which of these accounts is the balance sheet account. Have you decided yet? Mm -hmm. Which is the balance sheet account? Supplies or supplies expense? Say something. Supplies. It's supplies. Now look on your handout. Which instruction, one, two, three, four, or five, which number of instruction was the instruction to make an adjusting entry? Say the number. Three. 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 So here's the balance sheet account, and there's item three. If an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, is that the first entry in this balance sheet account? Say yes or no. No. Then it does not need to be reversed. Did you hear me? That's how you follow that rule and apply that rule. If an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, it didn't, and therefore it does not need to be reversed. That's rules. And you've got a decision tree out, some of you in front of you, and others should. If you follow the path down that decision tree, you'd see that asset method does not need to be reversed. You ought to try using the decision tree this week. Even if you don't have to, try so that when you had to, it would make better sense. Now, rules, 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 rules. Wouldn't you rather understand why to do it and choose to do it because it was the right thing to do than because somebody else imposed on you a rule that said you had to do it? Let me see if I can illustrate. My sister nagged me beyond any imaginary thing you could come up with to buckle my seatbelt. Nag, 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 nag. And the more she nagged, the more rebellious I, came, I became. <coughs> I just would not buckle my seatbelt because she was nagging so much. Until the day that the law in Oklahoma went into effect, we had to buckle our seatbelts. For the first time, I stopped at the end of the driveway and buckled my seatbelt, and I have buckled it ever since. And Frankly, I've made up my mind that I will continue to buckle it. As far as I'm concerned, Oklahoma can now repeal the law. No longer must I have somebody else impose on me the right thing to do. I've finally chosen the right thing to do because I understand the consequences. Do you understand the parallel I'm trying to draw here? Would you rather learn a rule and apply the rule and not have any thought process of your own or would you rather understand this and choose to make or not make a reversing entry because it was the right thing to do? Let's see if I can get you to understand it. I'd rather you understand it. 
I'm going to try a couple of times at this today. If you don't get it this time, maybe you'll get it the next time. Class. Which method are we following right this minute? Asset, asset. asset method. And what is the key in administering methods, Elena? Consistency. Now, consistency has two parts. All during that year. That's why we made up the number 11 and said we went to Office Depot 11 times. But consistency also says from one year to the next. Hey, class, what method did we use this year? Come on, say it again. And what method do you think we're going to use next year? Asset method. Consistency says so. Then where should the beginning balance be? In the asset account or the expense account? Say something. Asset. And where is it right now? Asset. It's in the asset account. Then leave it alone. It's right where we want it. It is not necessary to make a reversal in credit. Let's do it again. That should have been reviewed. That's the way we've done supplies all year long. Read the handout with me. B. Record the following directly in T accounts for supplies and supplies expense. Employing the system of initially recording supplies how? Everybody said? As an expense. Identify each entry by number. One, the beginning balance. Two, the purchases for the period. Three, the adjusting entry at the end of the period. Four, the closing entry. Five, the reversing entry if necessary. Now, part A didn't happen. This company chose to do part A, I'm sorry, part B consistently. They've done this one and they haven't done the other. The opening paragraph underneath the title still applies. The supplies inventory at the beginning of the year is 1,200. Purchases of supplies during the year total 3,600. And the inventory at the end of the year is 1,400. We're doing letter B. In which account supplies or supplies expense should the beginning balance appear? Michael. Austin. Beg your pardon? Is that what you said? Is that going to go? <laughs> Say it's whole name. Don't give me half a name. Say it's whole oh, name. Oh, So you, he said supplies. You say supplies expense. Yeah. Brooke. Supplies expense. Judith. Expense. Ethan. Supplies expense. Talon. Supplies expense. Luke. No, supplies expense. John. Supplies expense. Danny. Supplies. Chris. Supplies expense. Chris. Supplies. You already, I did I already ask you? No. You're keeping a score for me? Yeah. Come over here and do this. Let me sit down. <laughs> Benji. Supplies expense. He said with confidence. John? There is a definite trend going on here. Do y'all realize what the score is? <laughs> yeah, nine That's three. nine to three. Mika? Because? because? because Speak up. What if I talk the cost of the expense Yes. <laughs> We're using the expense method. The beginning balance should be in the expense account. Shouldn't it, class? Yes or no? Yes. Two, the purchases for the period. We bought $3,600 of supplies in one trip to Office Depot. True or false? False. 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 How many times did we go? Eleven. Eleven times. Eleven times we credited cash. And debited? Alina? Matt, supplies or supplies expense? Yeah. Supplies. <laughs> Stephanie, supplies. she said with confidence. Supplies, supplies expense because expense. this is the expense method, yeah. right? You right? Yeah. We followed the expense method. We ought to put it in the expense account. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. 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 Not as hard as you're making it. And the key to determining that, Elena, was consistency. We didn't have to decide this 11 times. We decided once to follow the expense method, right? So, 
what's the balance of this account? Everybody in the room that knows said $4,800 debit or credit? $4,800 debit. I need one volunteer hand up. Give me an adjective to describe the balance of that account. Talon. Mixed. This is mixed. What things are stirred together in this account right this minute, Talon? Uh, we have. Supplies that are used and ones that are unused. Used and unused is one way to answer that correctly. Asset and expense. I prefer used and unused. Okay. If we did nothing, we would overstate expenses, understate assets, understate net income, understate capital, mess up both financial statements. Don't you think we ought to do something? Make me an adjusting entry. I'm looking for a volunteer. Alina? You would. Credit supplies expense thirty four hundred and debit supplies thirty four hundred. Debit supplies and credit supplies expense for thirty four hundred has merit. Describe the thirty four hundred for me. Thirty four hundred is the forty eight hundred subtract the fourteen hundred. Is correct, but I had more in mind. Is that used or unused? Which is it? I'm asking Alina, and if you wanted to volunteer, you should have raised your hand. That's the used Oh, wait, portion. no, it's the unused. Oh, wait a second. You want to do the opposite this time because you want the balance and supplies to be 1400 So you are going to credit supplies expense 1400 and debit supplies 1400 Debit supplies and credit supplies expense for 1400 or 3400 1400 because you want the balance. You seem pretty sure of this. Yes, you want the balance to be 1400 And I kind of like the way you caught your mistake and corrected it because it doesn't make sense that you would use the opposite method and make the same entry. You know what I mean? Y'all with me or not? Yes. yes. But look, we accomplished the same thing. A minute ago, if you want to look up on your sheet of paper where you were taking notes, the balance of supplies right this minute was $1,400, and so is it now. And a minute ago, the balance of supplies expense was $3,400, and so is it now. We accomplished the same thing. That's the point. It doesn't matter what method you use. It matters that you arrive at the same destination that you reflect unused on the balance sheet and used on the income statement. If you've got a question right now, you should ask me. Chuck? I don't, I don't really understand that. Can you, can you explain it one more time? Just yeah, but I might explain it one more time and you still didn't understand it. Could you ask me a question a little bit more than that and let me direct you? I felt like I was with her when she said um, credit to find this thing 3400 yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I'm not sure why. Okay. Then let's talk about adjectives. Class, let's pretend Joe didn't ask that question and let's pretend I'm talking about all of them. How about we take two numbers, and, um, concepts, used and unused, and take two account titles, financial statements, and match them. On this hand, I've got supplies and supplies expense or balance sheet and income statement. Yes? And on this hand, I've got used and unused. Now help me match them up. What goes on the balance sheet in supplies? Used or unused? Unused. unused? unused. No matter what. What goes on the income statement in supplies expense? Used or unused? Used. used. Now read the opening paragraph at the facts we were given. 1400 was clearly described as the ending inventory, the unused portion. That goes in the asset. To make that entry for 3,400 the way she did the first time incorrectly would put 3,400 in this account. That would be the used portion that would be in the asset, Joe. We want the unused to be in the asset. Did I get through to you that time? It's good to ask. Who else has a question? Austin? Oh, I just, how is that considered balance now though since at the, on the first one on the supplies expense I was 3,400. On both, how's the 14? I don't know, that just confuses me. It, it, it's not in balance. There's a balance here of 3,400. It's not equaled out yet. Okay. There's just, this is a debit balance of $1,400. Okay, so we're gonna, okay. We're gonna do that in a second. 
I, thought I think we're on step four. I think that's Austin's curiosity. Step four is a closing entry. One of these two accounts needs to be closed. Which one is it, class? Supplies. Speak up. Supplies. It's supplies expense. Supplies expense is closed in which step? First, second, third, or fourth, say something. Second. In the second step of closing entries. If you're willing to make me this closing entry, would you hold up your hand and talk to me right this minute? Brian? You will credit supplies expense $3,400. And? Debit income summary. Debit income summary. Credit supplies expense for thirty four hundred is correct. Have you posted mentally, Brian? Yes. The balance of supplies expense right this minute is. Yeah. Brooke, how does that entry that Brian just made compare to the one you made a minute ago? It closes both accounts. It's exactly the same as the entry you made a minute ago, which is more evidence that we've arrived, that we've arrived in the same place, that both methods accomplish the same results. We make the same closing increase. The differences happened before now. Now we're in exactly the same position and continue on. Five, the reversing entry if necessary. Well, we've learned some rules. When you don't know what to do, it's nice that somebody else imposes on you rules. Like, all accruals need to be reversed. Is this an accrual or a deferral? Everybody said? Deferral. It's a deferral. That rule is not going to help us. Second rule always works. If an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, in order to apply that rule, we need to know which of these two accounts is the balance sheet account. Have you made up your mind? Mm -hmm. Which of these two accounts is the balance sheet account? Everybody knows said supplies. supplies. And which of the five instructions was the instruction to make an adjusting entry? Have you looked? Do you know? Would you say it? Three. Speak. Three. Three. Is that the first entry in this account? Yes or no? Yes. If an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, it should be reversed. Does this need to be reversed? Yes. yes. And let's go for that understanding step, the icing on the cake. The key word in administering methods, Elena, is consistency, suggests that we should use the same method from one year to the next. Which method are we using this year, class? Could you speak up a little bit? Which method should we use next year? And where should the beginning balance be? In the expense account. And where is the balance right this minute? In the asset account. Do y'all see what I'm saying? There is no normal transaction. There's nothing that's going to happen next year that would fix this if we don't fix it right now. It's strongly recommended that you make all the reversing entries the first day of the new year before you make the coffee. I'm looking for a volunteer to make me this reversing entry. Where are you? Who are you? Chris? Um, credit supplies for 1400 and debit supplies expense. A reversing entry is exactly the opposite of adjusting entry. Chris found these two that represented the adjusting entry. He credited supplies and debited supplies expense for $1,400 and in essence, Move the balance from supplies to supplies expense. We're following the expense method next year. Now that beginning balance is in the expense account, right where we want it. It will become an expense in the new year. And that's a good thing. It's right where we want it. If you've got a question about this, I wish you'd ask me right now so that we could press on. On the handout, it says the unearned advertising revenue at the beginning of the year is $20,000. Revenues received in advance during the period totaled $130,000. Could we pause on that second phrase? Revenues received in advance during the year total $130,000. I would like for you to describe, to decide for me whether we're talking about an accrual or a deferral. Right this minute. Have you made it your mind? 
Oh, that we would have clickers. And I know what you're thinking right this minute. Is this something for which we're doing the work and are to be paid later? <coughs> or did we collect the revenue from this customer and then we're obligated to do the work for them? Would you read the second phrase of the second set of circumstances with me, please? Revenues received in advance during the year totaled $130,000. Have you made up your mind this is an approval or a deferral? Say yes or no. Yes. yes. Approval. Deferral. It says revenues received in advance. You got the money and now you're going to do the work. This is a deferral. This whole sheet of papers about deferrals. Let's keep reading. And the unearned advertising revenue at the end of the year is 18000 A. Hey, record the following directly in T accounts for unearned advertising and advertising revenue employing the system of initially recording advertising fees. How? Everybody that knows it. Speak up. Liability method. We're going to have two T accounts. Let's talk about the nature of these two accounts real quickly. Could you distract yourself from the handout? and tell me about these two accounts. What kind of an account is unearned advertising? Asset, liability, capital, revenue, expense, say something. Liability. Goes on the balance sheet of the income statement. How come I got that big hearty answer the first time and practically no answer the second time? Goes on the balance sheet of the income statement. Balance Normal balance is debit or credit. It's a liability. Its normal balance is credit. credit. Is closed or not closed? Not closed. Liabilities. Closed. Is closed or not closed? Not closed. not closed. So tell me about advertising revenue. Is an asset liability capital revenue expense say something? Credit. Normal balance? Credit. Do you realize what you just said? Look, this normal balance is, say it. This normal balance is, ah, think a minute. We collected cash from customers and debited cash. I'm looking for something to credit. Look, here's two perfectly good things with credit balances. I could credit either one of them and make things come out right. Does it matter which method I use? No. Either method will work. These both have credit balances. Advertising revenue goes on the balance sheet of the income statement. Closed or not closed? Advertising revenue is closed or not closed? Closed. In which step? One. One. Chris, your hands up. Um, the unearned, rev unearned revenue, how come that's a liability rather than a revenue? This represents money we got up front for which we have not done the work. Want some good examples? Magazine companies have subscriptions and you pay in advance. Newspapers to do too. Insurance companies collect in advance. Um, you pay tuition in August for the whole semester. From the university's perspective, that's unearned tuition. I bought season basketball tickets the other day. They've got my $400. They haven't played a game yet. Won't until November. That's unearned revenue. That's a liability to them until they play the game until the class is taught. You with me? Uh, room and board. Until the meal is served. So if you don't go eat the meal, it expires anyway. If I don't go to the basketball game, can I use the ticket for game three to go to game five? No. They've earned it. That's expired. That's unearned revenue. The book's been hinting at this. It's come up in a problem or two. This is the official time where to learn it. So, <coughs> identify each entry by number <coughs> one, the beginning balance. In which account, unearned advertising or advertising revenue should the beginning balance of 20,000 appear? Have you made up your mind? Say yes or no. Yes. You should have said yes, and I had about four people say yes. This is the point at which you're supposed to know more than when you walked in the room today. This should be easier for you right now because of the pattern that I've tried to create for you. In which account should the beginning balance appear, Talon? In the unearned uh, advertising revenue. Because? 
Uh, we're using the liability method. This is the liability method and that beginning balance should be in the liability account. Two, the revenues received in advance during the period. Do you think we collected the whole $130,000 all at once? Say yes or no. no. How many times do you think it took us to collect the $130,000? We get to make up a new number. <coughs> How many times? 14, I heard? Yep. Give me another one to choose from. 13. <laughs> 17. I was thinking of a higher number. 33. 12. A little bit higher than... Uh, okay. 29. In, in 29. I like 29. Okay? 29 times we collected cash from them. 29 times we debited cash. 29 times we credited... Say it. You're killing me. Say it. Unearned advertising revenue because class... Liability. We're using the liability method. And the key word in administering methods, Elena, is we picked a method. How many times do we have to decide that? Once. We're using the liability method consistently. Three, the adjusting entry at the end of the period. Anybody added these two? What's the balance of this right now? 150000 Give me an adjective to describe the balance of that account before adjustment. Everybody that knows said, mixed. this is mixed. Give me the two component parts of this. I need one volunteer hand up. What's all stirred together this time? Sir? Earned and unearned. Earned and unearned. Earned and unearned. Consider doing nothing. This one's huge. Hear me. This one's huge. Listen. Consider doing nothing. You would overstate liabilities and understate revenue. Can y'all see that play out to a completed income statement? You have zero revenue to report and all these expenses to deduct and a net loss. Your boss's bonus is based on net income and you're reporting a net loss because you overlooked making this adjusting entry, don't you think we ought to do something? Did you get my story or not? Sure we should. Read it. And the unearned advertising revenue at the end of the year is $18,000. I need a volunteer and I need them fast. Alina? You're going to debit unearned advertising for $132,000 and credit advertising revenue for $132,000. I don't see $132,000 any place on this sheet of paper, Elena. Tell me how you got it. $150,000 and you subtract the $18,000, so that $18,000 will be left with unearned advertising. Okay. It says the unearned is eighteen. We want that account to have eighteen thousand dollars in it, right, Alina? Yeah. And therefore, the difference one fifty minus eighteen is the earned portion that you're transferring to the revenue account. Right, class? Correct. Right, class? Correct. Who are you making it tough on? <laughs> Four. The closing. One of these two accounts needs to be closed. Which one is it? Revenue. Everybody that knows said? Revenue. The revenue account needs to be closed in which step? First. Everybody said? First. In the first step. I'm looking for a volunteer to make me this entry, please. Talon. Debit advertising revenue for 132000 And credit? Nothing. Every entry has to have a debit and credit. Danny? Uh, Aren't we just closing the debit bill? Didn't hear you. Yeah. Income summary. Income summary. <coughs> oh, okay. Debit advertising revenue and credit income summary for 132000 Have you posted mentally, Talon? Yes. The balance of advertising revenue right this minute is? Nothing. Zero. Five. The reversing entry if necessary. All accruals need to be reversed. Is this an accrual or a deferral? Deferral. It's a deferral. It's not going to help us. If an adjusting entry creates the balance in a balance sheet account, it needs to be reversed. 
Which number was the instruction number for mega reversing entry? Mm -hmm. Speak up. Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Which of these two is the balance sheet account? Advertising revenue is the balance sheet account. Is this the first entry in that account? Is this advertising revenue? Advertising revenue is an income statement account. This is a balance sheet account, and that's the first entry in that account. Oh, no. is, does this need to be reversed? No, no. I've got a feeling if you followed that decision tree, you could find the conclusion that said if you're accounting for deferred revenue using the liability method, it would not need to be reversed. The key in administering methods is consistency. If you use the liability method this year, you should use the liability method next year. And the balance is in the liability account right where you need it, no further action necessary. I haven't finished this handout in a while and got frustrated not being able to finish the handout, so I have this second half as an out-of-class lesson. No audio, no video, it's just got words on the screen as if I'm talking to you. If you would like to do that, find it on the class website. You could just do this last part that we didn't do, or these two if you wanted to review them, and answer the questions. It's just like the dialogue that you experienced in class. Try to answer the question before you click to the next slide. Get the right answer. Build your confidence. You'll be better off with it. Have a nice day and a great week.